Sig Sauer sucks, except for one gun. Ladies and gentlemen, we're gathered here on the range today to talk about the one gun that SIG makes that's actually useful, all right? I've got some history with this weapon right here. And uh, I carried it for a long time and I saw this weapon abused in ways that just can't be replicated in the civilian world out here on the range, right? This is the SIG P226, all right? Tell you a few stories about this gun. Um, I have actually dove with this gun for hours upon hours in salt water. I've carried it in every environment from extreme cold to hot desert. Um, during third phase when I got issued my first SIG P226, I remember standing in front of a 4x4 post with this weapon for about an hour muzzle striking the 4x4 post as hard as I possibly could with the bottom frame of the weapon and it caused no problems. I went on to continue to use the weapon throughout the rest of training. So man, this sucker can take some abuse and it absolutely runs. Let's talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly of the SIG P226, all right? We'll start with the magazine well. Nothing special. There's really nothing at all special about this gun, but nothing special about the magwell. It's not flared, uh, but it's sufficient to get your magazine in. You do have a lanyard loop. Talk about the grip, all right? I've never liked the grip on this weapon. I've never liked it. Uh, I've actually saw, we've had female students with small hands out here on the range using SIG P226s, and they have a really hard time getting a solid grip on this weapon. It's just, to me, it's not shaped right for me personally. Uh, it's big. Uh, the texture on the grip of the P226 is adequate at best, all right? So there are a lot better textured grips out there and um, a lot better shapes and angles and a lot, uh, a, lot of wet, a lot of newer pistols you can actually get higher up on the gun to control the recoil better. So this, is, this weapon's been around for a long, long time, guys. So grip is sufficient, nothing special about it. I know you can buy aftermarkets, but we're re reviewing the gun as it comes out of the box, all right? Trigger well. Trigger well's nice and, uh, nice and large, big enough to get a gloved hand in. Trust me, I know. I've shot this weapon thousands of times with a glo uh, gloved finger, so uh, it's good to go. Another thing I love about these old SIG P226s is the fact that they do have a solid metal frame. They don't have a polymer frame like your uh, newer striker fire pistol, so it's just extremely durable. Trigger on this gun, as all other hammer-fired pistols out there, you have two different trigger pulls, right? The first trigger pull is going to be double action, so it's going to be really long and hard to pull the trigger on that first shot. Everything after that, man, it's just right there. You pull through the slack, and it's got a nice trigger press, all right? But you got to get used to that, and when you're learning to shoot on a hammer fire pistol, you got to get used to both of those trigger presses to use the gun efficiently and effectively, okay? On this model, we do have a rail down here on the bottom. This is actually the pistol that I got when I graduated SQT. Uh, it's got some special engraving on it, and it's probably the only gun, maybe one of two or three guns that I own that is not for sale. Um, slide serrations on the P226, they're good to go. They're nice and aggressive. You can get a good handle on the back of the gun. No issues. Sights, this one comes from the, came from the factory with night sights on it. Uh, I don't like the sights on the SIG, these night sights in particular. They're pretty daggone hard to see. Uh, they're not the best sights in the world, but they do glow in the dark. They might not anymore. Maybe the tritium's dead in them. I don't know. I haven't checked them. This is pretty much a, a safe queen for me. Uh, so sights, I would change them if I was actually going to use the weapon. Another thing I've noticed with the SIG P226 is you've kind of got a... It's really weird. It's like We'll test point of aim, point of impact here in just a minute on this on this gun. Point of aim, point of impact's a little off, so we'll test that on the paper here in a minute, and I'll show you how that works. Um, magazine release button, it's adequate at best, right? So 
you got kind of a small button there to hit. Mag changes are pretty quick with this though because we do have nice metal magazines that slide nice and easy in and out of the magazine well of this weapon. I've got so many of these mags. That's another thing you guys know. We talk about the importance of a good magazine to pair with a well-engineered weapon. These magazines are extremely tough, will last you probably a lifetime unless you do something absolutely crazy with them. The only thing that I've ever seen kill these magazines is rust when we were diving with them in salt water. But uh, if you keep them clean, they're gonna last a long, long time. So, yeah, man, reliability, it's unsurpassed. Uh, I mean, this, in terms of relia reliability, and just absolute freaking abuse, I would put this 226 up against a Glock. Just because I've seen what it's been through. I haven't put a Glock through what I've seen this pistol be put through. So in terms of reliability, it's, uh, it's solid and adequate right out of the box. So we're going to now put some rounds through this thing, run it through some drills, and uh, you'll get to see it work. All right, guys, so we're going to put this P226 through its paces. Again, this is the one reliable gun SIG has ever made. Uh, when we have students out here on the range and their weapon starts to malfunction, no matter what type of weapon it is, we always say it's sigging up on you, right, if it's breaking. But this is a good one, so we're going to run it through its paces, all right? So first thing I want to talk about, we hit it a little bit earlier. We have a decock on the SIG because it is a hammer fire weapon. Um, rack around in the chamber, you always decock the weapon if you're getting ready to put it in a holster. That's another step with a hammer fire weapon that you have to remember to do and you have to train uh, versus using the striker fire. Actually, that first shot, the way that first shot is supposed to work with a hammer fire pistol, you've got, I said you gotta get used to that trigger press, is because you start from here and as soon as your sights are aligned on the target, you actually start to pull the slack out of the trigger to the point that once you get to full extension, the weapon should be going off, all right? And then from there, reset and you're back on target. So that's the way you're supposed to pull the trigger, uh, the most efficient way to get that first shot off down range, but that takes a lot of practice to get that weapon to go off precisely at the same time you reach full extension. So let's work point of aim, point of impact real quick. I'm gonna shoot at target number one on our awesome new combat standards target. I'm just gonna line everything up right on target number one and I'm actually gonna go single action on this shot because I want to test that point of aim, point of impact with the best trigger pull I can. So everything's lined up right on dot number one. I'm gonna shoot a three shot group. All right, so we got pretty good point of aim, point of impact, a little bit high. I mean, just a hair high. Usually with this pistol, I was talking about it earlier, I'll aim just a hair low, just a hair under the exact spot that I want to hit with this pistol. It's just always seemed to work better for me just to kind of lollipop the dot. But as we see there, we're talking about maybe a half inch high, right? Point of aim, point of impact. So I want to run this thing real quick through the now drill just to, so you guys get to see this thing function. And then once we're done with the now drill, we'll hit that magazine change. So here we go. It's been a long time since I shot this thing, this big old fat, nasty grip. I can't stand that hump in that grip, man. I can't stand it. All right, which is why I don't use this weapon anymore. Part of the reason why. So here's the now drill real quick. Trigger reset on this gun is, is pretty sweet. Man, a trigger gets, takes a lot. You ha if you're going to use this weapon as your primary weapon, you have to just train on it all the time because that trigger is so much different than it is in a striker fire weapon. It's been a long time since I've shot this thing. So you saw the mag, the mag change was super smooth. Um, you have positive release on the magazine and it just slides right away from the mag well as soon as you hit it. Um, hey guys, if you're just stuck on buying a SIG or buying a hammer fire 
pistol. I would not recommend anything other than the SIG P226 just because I know how reliable, how durable it is. As you've seen out here today though, you've got to train with it. You've got to train with it. You've got the decock, you've got the double action trigger pull, you've got the single, single action trigger pull. The grip is extremely unique. So it's a, it's a hard pistol to go back and forth between it and something else every other time you're out on the range. So if you can get prof proficient with it, I highly recommend it. If you have small hands, it's probably gonna cause problems. I would upgrade the sights and uh, you're gonna be good to go. You can trust your life with this pistol, guarantee you. Enough said.